entrepreneur. You want to take your company value to 300 million, we're going to show you how to do it. But we got the roadmap, the aspirations. We'll give you a game plan and strategies. Seize control of your company's destiny today by tuning in to Private Capital Mastery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start the show. Welcome to a brand new episode of Private Capital Mastery, the podcast that takes you on a journey through the intricate world of capital for entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Brian Franco, and in today's episode, we're diving deep into the art of making the right financial decisions for your venture success. Imagine you're at the helm of a promising startup or a growing business, and you're faced with a critical decision, how to secure the financing you need to achieve your goals. You're not alone. Countless entrepreneurs grapple with this challenge every day. Whether you're in need of a lifeline to navigate a financial crisis or seeking to fuel your business and supercharge your growth, the choices you make can have a profound impact on your venture's future. In this episode, we are taking a closer look at the factors that influences your financing options, the challenges that can arise in the process, and the vast possibilities that emerge when you make the right choices. I want to introduce our guest today, Maria Pilipiv, who has a PhD focused on finance, has experience in both corporate finance, investment banking, and also co-founded several entities of which one went on to be a publicly traded company. Welcome, Maria. Thank you, Brian. It's a pleasure to join you on your insightful podcast. And uh, I'm looking forward to sharing my insights and having a conversation with you today. Absolutely. We, we really enjoy you covering out the time to spend with us. You are a wealth of knowledge and the experiences you've been through will certainly help illustrate, you know, the options that are out there, you know, not just by you know, studies or, or, or research. These are actual case studies that you've experienced firsthand. So I always appreciate that because it gives everyone what, what, I'll, say, what I'll say is a three-dimensional look at, at, at the world of finance, right? So um, today, you know, we'll be exploring the real world case studies, asking intriguing questions and providing valuable insight to help you make informed decisions. So Maria, I'm going to, I'm going to frame this with a few questions and, and feel free to, to chime in and provide answers and, and anything that you think that entrepreneurs would find useful uh, in this thought provoking conversation. So if you're ready, let's, let's dive into it. Let's go. All right. So question number one that I had for you, Maria, is how can entrepreneurs make the right financing decisions to ensure their venture success? It's a big question. And I think first and most critical is to understand your needs, which is, you know, you start by clearly identifying your venture's financial need, your stages of development, and uh, what are you trying to do, whether it's to scale up an existing uh, operations or is there something else that you're doing? And why I'm saying that understand your needs, because right now, especially at this time when the interest rates are high, market valuations are low, going for financing is very costly. You will give up a high chunk of your equity or you will get very high interest uh, that makes it not a good journey for the entrepreneur or makes it more difficult. You're absolutely, absolutely correct, Maria, because the cost of capital increases, so does the debt service of that capital. And the ca the cash flow and available debt service in businesses, you know, it, it, it's it's complicated enough to manage and to to have that element of of increased costs uh, certainly requires a leader, a CEO, a founder, an entrepreneur to really fine tune what it is they're going to be utilizing that capital for as far as use of funds and deployment. Um. I wanted to ask you in, in your real life case study and in, 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 uh, in, in the several companies you started, uh, and of course, you know, the one that went public, um, and, and congratulations on that. I know that's not easy work, um, but in your experience, can you highlight some challenges that you faced when seeking financing for either 
you know, growth, recapitalization, uh, and expansion? Um, Brian, that's a great question. Uh, the biggest challenge that we faced uh, is just due to the nature of enterprises is access to capital. If the entity is rather new and has a proven track record of operations, it makes it much harder to attract investors, whether debt or equity. Um, that said, uh, you know, we had uh, a company that is uh, in a path of growth. So it is uh, in a stage where it would be attracting debt providers. But because of the current market conditions, we have to deal with uh, giving um, slightly more than you would see in a 2020 or in 2021 where you have to provide uh, debt with uh, warrants, which dilutes uh, ownership. Uh, right now, in particular, I'm dealing with a few scenarios where a company uh, was in the path of growth. Unfortunately, due to high interest rates, uh, some entities were not able to make those payments. Therefore, they had to go for a very costly uh, financing, which came in the uh, form of equity. Uh, which obviously led to quite a dilute of terms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so the factors that seem to have influenced and continue to influence is, you know, number one, protecting your capital table, not diluting your stakeholders and your shareholders. And, and that really comes down to, you know, the perception of risk that investors and lenders will have on the business, um, you know, through their underwriting process. What what tools would you suggest to to founders and entrepreneurs that that they could deploy and use in preparing for those conversations? Because you know the these these underwriting processes, as as you are very well aware, um, they not only dive into the historic financials, the projected financials, um, and the and mean in showing the trajectory of where the business is going, but you know. There's a big part of this that looks at the team and the bios of the team that is executing on the strategy, right? Absolutely. So uh, we're delving into, you know, credit worthiness of the entity. And when we're looking at the character, um, it's you're looking at the management team and you're looking what is their track record? How has it executed successfully in the past? But also, it, it's broader term. You're not only looking at the management team and board of directors and advisors and what is their expertise and how they can help the entity overcome some of the challenges. You also will be looking at its past track record. You know, you will look at its uh, customer base, the concentration of the customers. Um, you will look at how they did they grow. Did they grow uh, through organic growth or through acquisitions? And how did they finance those acquisitions? And what was the due diligence done on that acquisition before it was completed? Whether it was a successful integration of that acquisition. So there's a variety of factors uh, that potential uh, capital providers are looking at. Um, not only character, but they also will be looking at collateral options, if there's any, and how, what is the value of that collateral? Uh, they will look at the capital of the company, uh, specifically, you know, they will be evaluating whether the, the, the inventory is strong, or how is the working capital overall of the company? And um, finally, they will be looking at capacity. Do you have a capacity to repay that loan in the future? And what is the risk to it? And uh, has the founders invested in the entity to help support it in the times of downturn? So there's multitude of um, segments or factors that are being considered when um, we approach capital providers. And why it's important is because knowing what is being looked and evaluated helps us as founders and entrepreneurs uh, prepare in advance. So, Maria, what factors influenced you as you were seeking financing choices, and you know what were the what were the effects and, and, and the consequences of those choices at, at those times? And I know you have several scenarios and, and several case studies, but maybe share one of them with us um, at this time. Brian, a great question. Um, right now, in twenty twenty three, we've seen an increase in interest rates. So the companies that have taken loans in prior years where the interest was floating um, 
have had an expected increase in interest rates. Uh, what it led to is to a need to raise additional funding to sustain its operations. And unfortunately, what happened is the need to raise additional financing at a very dilutive terms to the shareholders. So um, what I would say, what's critical is uh, preparing for various market conditions. And um, that would be the key. I think uh, all the entrepreneurs have to uh, think through, get uh, their financial management systems in place where uh, they also anticipate the changes in the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we talked about you know, protecting the capital table uh, if there's equity investments, we've talked about, you know, debt options and, and what requirements those debt options are going to have from a cash flow perspective, from a, there's even collateral coverage at times, sometimes not, sometimes these loans are cash flow driven, um, you know, and, and, but let's face it, there's going to be some companies that are either on a rapid growth trajectory um, or they're in a unique situation where, you know, they have, they have limited financing alternatives just simply because they have a um, a need to for, for faster funding, right? So in those case studies, in those situations are, are a little bit different because you, you have less time to prepare, right? Now, have you been in those you know high pressure, fast paced growth scenarios uh, where where you immediately needed you know financing to fund the growth of a company, and and if so. You know, what was the solution there for you at that time? Um, yes, I've experienced it several times uh, <laughs> through different entities. Yeah. And um, I think the biggest thing is not to panic. It's to take time and evaluate your options. Because unfortunately, once you make a decision on financing, that decision could be very uh, dangerous and destructive to the performance going forward. Uh, especially if we're talking about debt and right now at a very high interest levels. Mm -hmm. So uh, my suggestion would be always take your time and mm -hmm. consider if typical financing is not available, what alternatives do you have? And sometimes it's just thinking about strategic partnerships, maybe joint ventures, uh, reaching out to your um, clients and seeing if they want to provide uh funding uh, where it would benefit both parties. So I think being uh, thorough, thoughtful, and thinking through all the outcomes would be my greatest suggestion at this point. Yeah, and that is a great suggestion because, you know, when you have clients and customers that uh, are, are, you know, synergistic in nature and, and where you could offer them an equation, you know, one plus one equals something greater than three, as I like to say, uh, the the opportunity becomes very compelling as related to a, a lender, right? Um, or, and sometimes even an, an equity uh, a partner or capital provider. Um, and I think here, Brian, what's important also in those situations when you are in distress and you need immediate financing, uh, that's when relationships play a very critical role because, the, you know, if you had previous investors, uh, you can go back to them and often, and I've experienced that recently, uh, your investors will step in. They already uh, believed in your success before. Right now, during the times of downturn uh, and the uh, economy is not doing so well, they will be more likely than not come back again and help out rather than trying to go for something else. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. How would you explain to an entrepreneur so that they understand, you know, factors influencing their, their financing choices, you know, including, you know, the size and amount of capital, the duration of the capital, and, and, per, and perhaps even the, uh, the structures, right? Um, you know, what, what, what brief advice would you give entrepreneurs as they, as they consider what factors will influence their financing choices? I think uh, the biggest one, access to capital. You know, how easy is it to get uh, to the capital providers and what options you have at a table? And unfortunately, you know, it's harder right now than it was before two years ago. Um, also, another factor would be your cash flow situation and how urgent you need to get a capital. As we mentioned before, the urgency creates uh, 
on favorable terms. Uh, so hopefully uh, there is more planning involved and projection that help you plan several months in advance because if you can plan in advance to come to your capital providers, they will see the thoroughness of the management team and it will be considered as a credit that you are stepping in ahead of time rather than coming in when the situation is critical because then the terms will be less advantageous and uh, uh, you know more hurtful to the business. Mm -hmm. and then obviously another factor will be, do you have any collateral and assets? that can reduce the interest rate and provide some uh, safety net for the lender. And uh, whether you're willing to give your control and ownership, that's when we're talking about equity. And obviously, uh, the biggest overwhelming scene would be market conditions at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and along with that, you know, as, as the entrepreneur or CEO continues on that journey of, of seeking or targeting the right financing, um, you know, negotiation is important. And typically, you know, there are professional investment bankers or capital providers that are negotiating um, the, the, the capital that's needed, right? And so, but entrepreneurs and, and CEOs, they, they need to have some basis of understanding, you know, of the negotiation. What would you say in terms of strategies, you know, what, what strategies can entrepreneurs use to ensure successful negotiations in, in these in these dialogues in settings of, of accessing capital? Um, I think one of the critical things is being prepared, which means you research and understand the financing terms, market conditions, and industry standards. And sometimes if you don't have access to the market data, uh, I would advise always to talk to a professional and engage a professional who can uh, help you understand what's happening and what terms you can negotiate on. Um, having a clear communication channel uh, to articulate your needs, goals, and expectations. And um, I believe that uh, structuring a relationship where it's a win-win outcome for both parties, your capital provider and you, is important um, because you can build that relationship that in times of distress, it can come back to you. Uh, so uh, compromising, being flexible, but at the same time, knowing when to walk away if the you know the terms are not to the advantage of your business going forward. Correct, correct. No, that, that's great. That's great advice, and it, it comes down to if there is a case where you know you are um, d distressed due to economic times or some sort of shift in in, in the world, as we've seen over the last few years. You know, there's a lot of companies, even that we saw, that really that they pivoted in the way where they they were just not running from the business or running from the lenders and creditors and partners they were they were very strategic in how they right sized their business put their you know put their costs in line with their revenues and got through those tough times right and uh, and then there's also those case studies where businesses grew at, you know 30 to 50% over the last few years even some you know over 100% growth and you know that also requires a very unique uh, mindset because what 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 brought a CEO, founder, or an entrepreneur to to these different scenarios, right, required different thinking, as as you're describing. So, Maria, thank you for that insight. It's extremely helpful and valuable to the listeners because not everyone has been able to be in a room and be in your shoes in the several businesses that you co-founded. And of course, even the business that you've taken public, it's it's very unique in terms of your insight, your knowledge, your experience and the wisdom that you shared today. And I really appreciate you taking the time with us. Um, Brian, thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. Love to have you back again and um, dive into other details and, and other topics. Uh, we, we really hope you enjoyed this uh, informative episode of Private Capital Mastery. I'm your host, Brian Franco, and I look forward to spending more time with you next Tuesday. Until then, have an amazing week, and I'll see you next time.